Okay, welcome back 154 students. We are going to look at the internal anatomy now of the bullfrog. So we've got two here, then we'll kind of switch back and forth to show you good examples of structures. We will also talk about internal sex of these frogs. We'll take a look at the outside, make some hypotheses as to what we think they are, and then looking at their internal organs, confirm that, okay? Before we get to the sex, let's start with some of these internal organs, okay? So the most obvious organ when you open up the frog is going to be this big three-lobed structure here, okay? So this is the liver of the frog, all right? So as you can see, there's three different lobes here. It serves the same function um, as it does for us. It helps to produce bile and begin aiding in digestion, okay? So it's fairly large. We're gonna go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay, so once you've removed that structure, it gives you a little bit better look into um, some of the other organs behind it. As you can see back here, there's this small little structure. There's one on the other side, a little piece of the liver is kind of obscuring it, okay? This is one of the lungs of the frog. There's a better example over here. It's this much larger kind of deflated balloon looking structure, okay? One over here. In some examples like this one, it kind of blends in with the liver. So make sure you distinguish between the lobes of the liver and what are lungs, whether they're expanded like this or this much smaller kind of deflated structure here. <clears throat> Frogs do the majority of breathing through their skin, so they have very underdeveloped lungs, right? Amphibians need to stay moist. One of the reasons that is is because they can absorb oxygen through their skin. So they don't use their lungs near as much as for example, an organism like us, okay? So let's go ahead and move to this structure right here on top. A little bit of connective tissue around it, but it's kind of, in your video, is going to look like an inverted triangle, okay? This is their heart. You can go ahead and remove this. Okay. Frogs have a three-chambered heart, unlike us, hence that triangular shape. Okay. So they've got two atriums on the top, or right and left, and then a single ventricle in the middle below it. So again, it's kind of a triangular shaped organ. All right. So now we've got those out of the way. Let's move that little bit of liver. We've got the lungs. Um, the next structure that sometimes comes out when you take the liver out is this little green ball here. It's deflated now, but this is the gallbladder inside of the frog, okay? It's used to store that bile that the liver is producing and then sends it into the digestive system to help with digestion, okay? Now that we are on digestion, let's continue to talk about this. So, right, when we did the external anatomy, we talked about the mouth of the frog and the esophagus. That connects to all of this stuff here, okay? So the esophagus in there connects to this structure into the stomach, okay? So I sometimes compare this structure, I don't know, at least to me, it looks like a shrimp tail, okay? This is the big stomach of the frog. And then at the base of the stomach, where it turns into our small intestine, which is become detached there, it's okay. Essentially, right here, where it turns from stomach into small intestine, is what we call the pylorus, or the pyloric sphincter. So we as humans have this same sphincter separating our stomach from our small intestine. It wants to keep all the acids and digestive juices in the stomach from getting into the rest of the digestive system. So there's a muscle in there that can open and close, controlling what moves from the stomach into the small intestine, okay? So that next structure would be the small intestines connected here. Let's slide over to this one. You can see it a little bit better, right? So here's our stomach. All of the small tubing connected to the stomach is small intestine. Now, 
Don't let the name small intestine confuse you. It's actually longer than the large intestine, but the diameter of it is small, which is why it's called the small intestine, okay? As you can see in the torso of this frog, there's small intestine all coiled up in here. Eventually, if you trace it all the way down, it will turn into the large intestine. Like I said, is named the large intestine because of the wider diameter that it is here. So this structure kind of runs along the back of the frog, okay, is the large intestine. It's going to connect to the cloaca, which we identified on the external structures, right in between the frog's legs. And this is the only exit that frogs have. So whether it is urine, whether it is solid waste, whether it is reproductive products, they all come out the cloaca of the frog. So the large intestine to release those solid wastes is connected to the cloaca, okay? I think I missed pancreas when we were up in here, so yeah. At the base of the stomach, right where it touches the small intestine, sometimes it's hard to see, but this kind of string-like, or I don't know, almost noodle-looking structure, this is the pancreas within the frog, okay? It helps with digestion, releasing juices into the small intestines to begin breaking down food. So this pancreas here. Okay, what have I not gotten to yet? Ooh, okay, so yes. Probably the most obvious structure that you are going to see once you've kind of moved the liver out of the way for the most part are these yellow kind of finger-like projections that you see coming out of both sides of the frog on that dorsal side or on the back. These are all called fat bodies, okay? And just like the name says, they are there to store fat. Um, sometimes when you are dissecting a frog, you see very little fat bodies. Sometimes you will see an abdomen completely full of them. That can be an indication of how much extra fat reserve these organisms have, okay? So these guys are all fat bodies. Okay. We did the heart. Let's do, let me cut some of this stuff out so we can see. Now, if you guys were here in class, I would encourage you to cut open their stomach, see if we could see anything fun in there. Sometimes there's little pieces of insects or crawfish um, that you can see in there, but we're not gonna do that today, okay? So this structure that you can see here, right? this little kidney bean shaped structure that once I've kind of moved the large intestine out of the way, this is the spleen, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. The function of the spleen is to help recycle red blood cells as well as destroy bacteria and other foreign invaders that get into the blood system, okay? All right, so now that we've got that large intestine out of the way, we can see, let's move these fat bodies. This structure, that runs along the back of the frog. We've got one on each side, so they're paired, okay? These are the frog's kidneys. They, just like in humans, are responsible for filtering the blood and producing urine. So they, again, are going to be connected to the cloaca to release that liquid waste product out of the frog, okay? And then I think, yeah, we are just left with reproductive structures. Oh, I did forget one. Yes, I'm sorry. This last structure right here. Here's the urinary bladder, which of course the kidneys are connected to that will store the urine, urine Excuse me, before it exits out of the cloaca. So it's kind of this, similar to the lungs, it's obviously in a very different location, but kind of this deflated balloon looking structure is the urinary bladder. Okay, so let's take a look. I know I've got these frogs pinned down, but let's look at the outside of them real quick. And we talked about, when we talked about external anatomy, looking at the tympanic membrane to try and at least externally distinguish what the male and the female frog are, okay? So the easiest way we said could be to look at the thumbs or to compare the size of this tympanic membrane to the eye. On average, a tympanic membrane that's larger than the eye with a big thumb and maybe if you can find those vocal sacs is going to be a male, okay? So I would guess that based on the size of this tympanic membrane, this is likely a male versus this frog over here, okay? So if you look at the size of this tympanic membrane here compared to her eye, which is a little bit shut, they're much more similar in size. So an eye that's about the same size as a tympanic membrane is likely going to be a female, okay? 
So Mr. Oliver mentioned amplexus when we talked about the external anatomy of the frog. Um, those are the different positions that frogs get in for copulation. Okay, so the female will release the eggs and the male will release the sperm. So there's no internal fertilization in frogs. So the majority of the differences are in the internal sex organs. Outside, they don't need to look very different because there's nothing about the external anatomy that's contributing to fertilization. So once you've kind of looked at the outside of the frog and made a guess as to whether it's a male or a female, you can use their sex organs internally to confirm, okay? So this here is a male. These two structures here and here, right on top of the kidneys, and again, they're paired. These are the testes of the frog. So they look kind of similar to that spleen. They're a different color, but about the same size, kind of kidney bean shaped. So that tells you that this is a male frog versus if you look over here at our female, and she's still got all of her internal organs, but you wouldn't see those testes. Instead, you see this structure, okay, this kind of black and white salt and pepper structure. These are all the individual eggs. They, of course, aren't large enough and mature enough to be released yet. They'll get much larger before she's ready to lay eggs. You will also see this structure, not to be confused with the small intestine, okay? Right, we've got small intestine up here that's attached to the stomach, all right? This structure down here that looks very similar, these are the oviducts, okay? So all of these eggs, once they get large enough and mature enough and they're ready to be released, will travel into the oviducts, which again, connect here at the cloaca because that's where the release of all of the reproductive products are, okay? So female with eggs and oviducts, we've got a male over here that we've determined because of the location or the presence of testes. Okay, so I think that covers everything for the internal anatomy.